Well, good morning, Magandang Umaga, and welcome to today's episode of My PI Dream. Today is Wednesday, and it is August 22nd. And I have to start out today's episode by making a big apology, and that's because uh, I got so excited yesterday when the ballot buying box came in uh, because I knew there was something special inside of it for me uh, that I forgot to share with you the unboxing of the ballot buying box. Uh, but I will tell you, the box came perfect. There, were, there was no, there was no gouges on the outside. Uh, there was, there was nothing broke on the inside. Of course, most of the stuff on the inside was just gardening stuff for around the yard. It was some irrigation pipes, connectors, uh, some valves that I sent for our outdoor irrigation. Uh, but the biggest thing inside was my lawnmower, <laughs> and I wish I could have showed you the un unboxing of that as well. But it came perfect. What I did was I packed the lawn mower inside the Balak buying box that LBC provides you with with the box that the lawnmower came in. So it was it was double box. So it would have been hard pressed to have done any damage with it unless they would have run a forklift right through it. But I gotta tell you, LBC did a fantastic job, uh, both all the way through from the point of origin to the point of delivery. So two thumbs up for LBC for my first shipment. Uh, we'll continue to monitor and report on all the shipments that I get in as they come in later on. And I promise you, I will do an unboxing with you so you can see me pulling out a lot of the goodies that I have inside the box that will come later on. Well, this morning, uh, I don't know if you noticed, there's no lights on inside the house. Uh, the fan is not running in the background. <laughs> there is no power light on to my water cooler over here. And why, you might ask yourself, well, that's because we are a, uh, in a brownout. Now, usually in this subdivision, we get notifications when Bottleneck does a scheduled brownout. Well, for some reason, I didn't receive any notification from our security guards uh, that this was scheduled. I don't know if it's because it just slipped by. I don't know if they were aware of it. Uh, but I do know rumor control in the barangay, uh, uh, someone yesterday mentioned that uh, there was a brownout for today. So I got up extra early, so I had coffee at 5 a.m. this morning, because usually the brownouts start at 6 a.m. So I had my coffee, I got to talk with Ness, uh, I, got, I got all the things that I need electricity for, I took care of that first thing this morning. Then lo and behold, exactly, exactly at 6 a.m. we lost everything in the middle of a chat with, with Ness on the Skype session. So that's how the day started. So you're saying to yourself, well, if you have no electricity, what are you gonna work on today? Well, remember, I got the uh, I got the lawnmower in yesterday, and uh, the lawnmower, whether it be gas powered or battery powered, requires no plug into electricity. So, guess what I'm doing this morning? Yes, you guessed it. I'm going to cut the yard. Now, if you see over my shoulder, this yard is different levels right now. Uh, to some really high and some really low. I actually used the lawnmower as soon as I got it out of the box yesterday. I put it together and I did some in the front, but it was so high in some spots. So what I have to do the very first time, I have to do it in chunks. I have to set the level a little bit high and then cut it down lower by lower by lower until I get the level that I want. And that's what I'm going to do today. So my morning is going to be spent, uh, or part of my morning is going to be spent doing yard work. Uh, once that gets done, literally, uh, what takes my gardener two to three weeks to hand clip the yard, I'll do it in about 30 minutes. Ah, the miracle of technology. Well, let's go ahead and get today started. I babbled enough for this morning's intro. And then I don't know what's gonna happen the rest of the day. We will see what we can do without electricity. So, without further delay, let's get today's video underway. <music> I got the lawn mode, everything except for just a little bit, and then the battery died on me. Uh, I charged it one time, but I did pretty much the the uh, amount of th three cuts of this yard. Did you see how many times I went over? Because I had to do different multi levels inside there. I had to do. Hello. So what I what I, what I had I don't know who that is. 
I think maybe our ironworks painter is supposed to come here today. Maybe that's who is coming here right now. So anyway, uh, I did so many because I did layers. I started about a five, then went to a four, then a three on the lawnmower. Now, when you are establishing a new lawn, this is a tip for those who have never sodded before. And if you're building a new uh, a house on a new lot and you do the siding, now uh, people have the temptation to start cutting their grass early don't cut your grass early what we did here was actually perfect even if it gets overgrown allow your grass to grow allow the roots to establish and then what you do you start cutting and what you do is what i did today you cut just a little bit off the top and then you if you have to you cut down a little bit by a little bit a little bit until you get your desired length now when you do that with bluegrass bluegrass is a new creature for me uh and it's great and i'm i got to tell you i i picked the perfect grass for, I believe uh, for Villa Feliz here, uh, but the my gardener didn't cut the grass at all the entire time I was gone, the four months I was gone. So basically this grass has not been cut since it was first established about six, six months ago, seven months ago. I can't remember, you, you just go back to the videos you can see. But since some of it was so high, you can see we have some brown spots. Not so many, it's not bad. But just realize, realize what it is. The brown spots are the growth underneath the new growth on the top, which is the top of the grass. Remember this grass here, a lot of this grass was probably about three, three and a half inches tall. Now, what will happen when we cut off that green grass on the top and all you see is the brown on the bottom, the roots are still alive because if the roots were not still alive, that green on the top wouldn't do any good. So what will happen? It will reestablish itself. It will get nice and thick. But at, from this point on, if you maintain, we will maintain the level, the proper level that we want, it will grow nice and thick and lush at the level that we want. Then when we cut it, we won't have to do level five, four, or three. So basically once every maybe a couple weeks, three weeks, because this grass does not grow like centipede or uh, St. Augustine in the US. This stuff, you can actually last a lot longer in between uh, cuts. So anyway, uh, we have somebody here. I gotta figure out what's going on. So yes, these are the folks from my ironworks team. Uh, they are doing the touch-up painting. All the fencing will have a, a touch-up coat of, of the black uh, epoxy paint on there, protected from the rust. So they'll do that. Then they have some other ironwork stuff. I haven't done a follow-up yet to find out when they are going to complete. Remember, we're gonna put bars. We have those really nice decorative bars. We have the nice hinges, uh, the decorative hinges that go on, on the uh, garage door. We have some other ironworks that need to be done. Remember up here the transom. We have some ironworks on the inside that's being done. We have lots of ironwork. Uh, we we did a lot of ironworks uh, accent on on Villa Feliz, and it's going to look really nice when it's done. Remember when you're building, you know, ch we, we I do what's called chunking. Uh, Ness taught me this chunking. You do a little bit, you complete a job, one task at a time, and so you get them all done. Uh, and so a lot of people do like uh, my contractor. The guys will go and they'll start a project and they won't finish it, and they'll go to the next one. Then you have have lots and lots of open projects and be done but sometimes you have to do that because sometimes one task remember I told you before one task relies on another task to be complete before you can go on to the next task so what ends up happening it all gets done in due time but I like to see job completion I like to see something totally done before I move on uh, I m me and my daughter call that task orientation we're task oriented we want to complete a task before we move on to the other one and either way it works whatever works for you as long as you get your project done now, now, before the ironworks painters got here, we were talking about yard work. We were talking about establishing a lawn. And I think I was talking to you about uh, how to establish your yard for the first time. And like I said, when you look over my shoulder and you see those brown spots up there, don't worry about those. Uh, when you cut the nice green part off the top and then exposes that in the bottom. If it had nice green stuff at the top, it will rebuild nice green stuff at the bottom when it's opened up, exposed to the air, exposed to the sunlight, and as long as you have a good root system. Now, one of the things that should be done after several weeks, after two, three, four weeks, after your lawn is established, after they sod it and it starts growing together, 
you should put light fertilizer down a very low amount of, of just nitrogen uh, maybe a 1% or 2% something like that of some nitrogen time released if you can find it now I couldn't find it here all I could find was I think it was oh my goodness it was like 14% that was the lowest one that I could find so what I did in the backyard a lot of you were saying uh, uh, making comments about oh you got these spots in the backyard which were the spots where the dogs uh, were leaving their droppings and that's really rich in nitrogen high nitrogen and those were spurting up these green spots in the backyard and but you can see other areas were not as green so what I did the only thing I could find was that 1400 at one of my local uh, agricultural places that sell livestock food and and some fertilizers so I ended up buying uh, the 1400 and I distributed some of it in the backyard. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a drone shot if I have any battery left on the drone. Remember the problem with the drone? Oh, we'll do a follow up with that in, in just a little bit as well uh, for the customer, customer support. Anyway, I think I have less than 50% or less than 40% on my controller because remember it's not charging. The battery on the drone is working great. Uh, but I need to make sure I can call the drone back to home and the, the controller doesn't run out of battery. So let's go ahead and do a quick drone shot, a overhead view, and we can look and see how the lawn is being established right now. And uh, if you remember, we've done shots before. And uh, if you can remember what it looked like before, let's see if it's improved by adding that little bit of uh, nitrogen fertilizer on the back. Uh, the back was really uh, starving of, of, of nitrogen. Now the front, my gardener did a lot of watering all the time and then the dogs like the front so it had some natural fertilizer all the time in the front. So it stayed nice and green and it's still nice and green. But let's go ahead and do the drone shot and see what it looks like from overhead. As you can see, we're getting there. We still have a long way to go, 
Uh, we still have a lot of things to do, but we have a lawn uh, and we have something uh, that we can call a yard. So again, the things that need to be done, uh, you have to do fertilizer, any of the low spots that you have inside. And we don't have a lot of really bad low spots. Uh, believe it or not, the team that came in and did our landscaping, when they were doing that compacting, they did a really good job. We have a few spots again, uh, but not bad. And you just get some topper soil, something organically uh, rich, uh, and with a little bit of sand inside there. And you kind of level those spots out and the grass will fill it in and it'll, everything will be nice and level. Uh, and, and you won't be having bumps when you're doing your lawnmower. So uh, again, I am I am happy with where we are with the yard right now. Mm, the guys are in the front of the house and they're continuing to do the painting. Still have no electricity here. Uh, so I have to decide what I can do without electricity. Uh, so let's try to figure that out right now. So before we go on to our next task, whatever that might be, uh, I have a special birthday shout out. And the birthday shout out originates, it comes from Mr. Hilario uh, in Dubai. And this is for his daughter, Glibbery. And it's a special birthday today because today is Glibbery's 18th birthday. And that is a special birthday around the world because it's like the beginning of adulthood. So anyway, it's from, from me and your dad, Glibbery, happy birthday. Well, I'm not sure if you can see it, but there's water in the globe in each one of those lights. Now, if you've been following the series, you know that it took me forever to get these, uh, these lights, uh, these light fixtures for the back of the house, for the patio, where the barbecue grill is. Now, I, re I bought those from uh, Wilcon in Laguna, in Calamba, Laguna. Now, uh, again, it took forever to get those. They finally came in. They told me, the vendor said, these were the last three that we have. Well, I, I probably know why they're the last three that they had. And it's because you see this water that leaked on. It's not a good design. They're beautiful. I love these lamps, uh, but there's a problem with them. Uh, so I don't know where the water is getting in, but I will show you what I did. I think I know where it came in, and I'll show you what I did to remedy that. Uh, I'm going to take the globes off. I'm going to rinse them, clean those, rinse them, and put them back together. But I'll show you where I think the, uh, the water was getting in from. So these lamps, uh, they're supposed to be outside supposed to be outside lamps but for some reason it's a very poor design uh, the wire that goes into the top that clamps it in and provides the electricity to the, to the bulb inside right where the wire goes in and there was little openings on around here uh, right where it slips through it's a little clamp that clamps around and and then also another spot that could have possibly been uh, allowing water to seep in is on this little hinge right here on both sides, uh, they where it drills through. This is kind of you know you tighten the wing nut on, and so what I ended up doing, uh, and I'm going to test this to see if this fixed it. Uh, you can't really notice it from down on the ground, but I put a little clear silicon on the top. I put some clear silicon on uh, both sides, and I believe that's where the water is getting in. So I'm going to do that right now, and then we'll observe. I already noticed that the water is almost gone inside of here. You can see there's a little water in the bottom. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the globes off, and I'm going to clean these. Uh, this bulb actually doesn't work anymore. Uh, so I don't have electricity to test, so I'm going to go ahead and replace this bulb. I think the bulb might have burned out. I hope that's what it is and it's not an electrical problem. Uh, the other two still work fine, but uh, I'm going to clean them all out right now. Well, I'm guessing it's about 2.30 in the afternoon. I don't know what time it is for sure because my phone battery died. We have no electricity. Uh, all I have is whatever battery life is left on the GoPro today. But I, I'm pretty sure it's around 2.30 because my gardener is here and he shows up usually right around 2.30. Uh, so what I've been doing this afternoon, I've been doing yard work. I've been doing uh, getting a lot of the old wood from the construction that was in the front yard 
and things laying around inside the basement and just a cleanup of all the stuff that I could actually burn. I burned some of the stuff here on site. Today is going to end up being more like a, a cleanup slash working around the garden and yard day today. Uh, you saw I got the grass done this morning. I worked with some soil in the front. I moved some debris from the lot and from the basement. And uh, the next thing I want to do is I have a couple of places in the front that are supposed to be uh, areas where plants are going to be around the retaining wall. Uh, my gardener already went and grabbed a bunch of soil from the basement when they excavated. They moved some of it around the other lots around here. And uh, he's been pulling the, the topsoil from there to do the, the grass blocks inside the driveway. Well, he's got a, he has a, uh, a wheelbarrow full of the soil that he's planning on using for putting the sod pieces inside there. But I think I'm gonna sneak that away from him. I'll sneak it away. I'm gonna, dump, I'm gonna start dumping that inside those areas by the retaining wall so I can go in the next couple days and go do some uh, shopping for some plants to go inside there. I really want to get some of the plant uh, to start growing up around the retaining wall. I, I, it'll make it feel more homey here. Uh, just like those few plants that I put up by the coconut tree. Uh, and of course, the, the soil I removed that he dug over there, I'll replace it anyway uh, so that he can use for the grass box. So that's the next thing I'm gonna work on for today. Uh, I hope the electricity comes back soon, but uh, I don't think it's gonna come on until about 6 p.m and that's pretty much it's going to start getting dark then so l let me go ahead and get my hands in the dirt now before i get started moving earth around here i want to get your opinion you remember yesterday i stopped off with my uh, nephew over to wilcon and i got those two samples of natural stone uh, now what i want is to kind of figure out which one of them uh, look the best that complement the house as well as uh, then i got to do a pricing per post I gotta estimate how many of the each individual one it will take per post, and I gotta count the posts on, posts up, and then I gotta decide, <laughs> can I afford this venture? Which I don't think that I can. But anyway, I wanna get your opinion. So I want you to look at the two uh, pieces of stonework that I have. I'm gonna put them up next to uh, the, uh, the column, uh, the post uh, by the ironworks, with a view of Villa Fleas in the background. And you'll let me know which one you think is a better complement for the fence and the house. Now here is the stonework called California Bluff. Uh, I'm gonna lift it, I'm gonna try to put it, it's kind of very difficult with one hand here, because I got the camera, uh, but it would go up here and it would look something like this. And then the background, if you were looking, you see the house for the background, it would come out something like this. Hmm. And then I'll move it over here to the side so we can kind of get a side view angle look at it. So it would be something like this. I don't know. So anyway, I don't know how this, I think this would do fine complementing the house. Now let's take a look at the second one right here. And it has a little bit more of a grain slaty kind of a look. And it would go up here, it would look something like this. All right, and take a look if you were to look and see the background. We'll kind of look and see how it would look. That's probably a good angle because you can see the, the top post, you can see the house. And it's kind of hard to see on the side. Uh -huh. Oh, we might be even be able to slip it through here just a little bit. So I wonder it would look something just like this right here. Well, let's go ahead and go back and take a look at the California Bluff because I, I think I could fit it through this point right here. And a side view here. Well, anyway, tell me what you think. And once I get power back on inside the house, and I, it's kind of hard to see trying to hold it with one arm and I actually had my sunglasses on too but when I look at it tonight when I review it during the editing I'll take another look at it at that point and then uh, I got to sit out here and estimate how much it would cost for each one of these posts remember I believe one of them cost 225 pesos per piece and the other one was 200 50 or 260 pesos each that's pretty expensive when, when you consider that the regular tiling like the tiling that we put on the barbecue grill that was only about 70 pesos uh, per section uh, so these are about three times the amount uh, of the other tile so we're gonna look at this I'll get an estimate and then I might take a look at some of the other tiles and we'll do a comparison between the real stone of course the real stone you can't go wrong with real stone 
but you also have to you also have to be realistic about your budget so uh, anyway I'm going to get to start playing in the dirt for a little while So this is my gardener, uh, Ponciano, and he is digging out all the sand in, the, in the, the grass block area. I just picked up another load of the topsoil behind the house here, and uh, what I, I won't dump it inside uh, the flower bed area over here, but I'll leave it for him uh, because he's using it to fill inside those grass blocks and get some sod. And you can see, uh, he's almost got half of this portion of the driveway done. Uh, so we're making good progress with the, uh, the the grass that's going to go in here eventually like i said it will it will all look uh from from a aerial view when you look down this will look like regular lawn here but it will have the support uh for the vehicle to go up and down the driveway now a few people have made a comment about well if you have the grass on there isn't it going to be slippery uh, for the vehicle when it's wet to try to go up and down well uh, that is a possibility i don't know anybody else who has one of these type of grass blocks that has a slope that goes down up or down to the driveway but i'm sure there are many people out there that do have something just like this and if you are one of them please write in and let me know how it works for you but i also know that i have four wheel drive on the uh, on the hilux in the event that it is very rainy or it's wet or I, I i'm concerned i'll just throw the vehicle in the four wheel drive and i'll move up and down and i don't think i'll have any problem with it whatsoever Here's a great tip since I'm out here and I found tons of these inside the earth back there. If you can collect a bunch of your earthworms, here I'll show you what I got here. If you can save your, as many of your earthworms, I need to start separating because they're, they're, and this, these are tiny compared uh, to what I've been finding. Take those and put those inside where you're going to start your garden. Uh, either your garden or your uh, flower bed like this right here. Now the worms, they are magic for a garden. They do two main things for your garden. They aerate your garden. When they're drilling all through, they're making the soil where all the roots uh, can move through and it's not compacted. And the second thing that they do, some of the richest nutrient to add to your soil is uh, worm waste. Uh, that's why people have worm farms and they use worm farms to make their own uh, uh, fertilizer uh, for their plant and vegetable gardens. So uh, if you have a, a, a very rich area when you're digging and you have worms, make sure you put those worms in place is that you're going to be growing plants vegetables and uh, shrubs and things like that well it's about 4 30 it's i'm i'm bushed <laughs> i don't think i can do any more for today uh, lots of yard work today mainly mainly yard work no construction no, i don't think i did any construction at all today uh, and i did the repair of those lights uh basically clean those uh, those globes out of the lights on fixtures on the back of the house and i'll test that out tonight i, I changed the light bulbs i had four four watt leds inside there and uh, I didn't think that was quite enough lights. So I put six watt, I, I bought three six watt LEDs that are gonna, and I'll check those out tonight. Now, I am concerned with one of them, the one in the middle back there, because uh, when I unscrewed it, it was all rusted. That's what the reason it was out, it shorted out. It shorted out inside the light bulb. Uh, but inside, there was a little clip inside there that totally fell out. It was the, it disintegrated. I really don't think those uh, lights the, the light hardware, the fixture, I don't think it was really meant to be used outside. Or if it was, it's probably, like I said earlier, why there was only three left in stock and I got the very last three in stock. Uh, because I don't think they were designed very well. Well, there is supposed to be an awning. The house, if you remember the design, the 3D CAD of the house, way back, I don't remember what episode it was, but if you remember that, there's supposed to be an awning that goes over the top of that. And uh, my contractor uh, didn't install the awning. Uh, whether it gets done when he comes back, remember he comes back in about a week to two weeks, he starts working again. Uh, I'll discuss that with him to see. Uh, if not, I think what I might do, I might take the composite wood I have left over 
and do the framing for that make make sort of like a uh, real maybe like a pergola kind of a uh, design and put some of that translucent uh, roofing material that we saw over at City Hardware. I think I showed you that when I was over there. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, and that, but that's another project. But if we had an awning there, the point I was getting to was if we had the awning, there wouldn't have been any moisture getting into any of those lights and we wouldn't have had the problem that we have right now. Uh, but we'll, we'll deal with that. Well, let me close for today. And one thing I'd like to do before I close, I would like to thank all of you, uh, both on, on uh, the YouTube channel here and on Facebook, for sending me such warm, uh, kind greetings for my birthday today. Yeah, it's my birthday today. Oh, shout out for me today. Uh, and you're probably wondering, uh, why did you work today? Why are you out there working? Uh, well, you know, when you have your birthday, your birthday is supposed to be spent doing something you enjoy doing. And if you've been watching my channel, you know, I love working around the house. I love working around the yard. I like getting things done. So I did today what I enjoy doing on my birthday. And I got a wonderful video uh, from my daughter who sent me uh, a wonderful video of my grandchildren singing me happy birthday. And uh, that was so special to me this morning. And uh, also I got to speak with my wife and she had an opportunity to wish me a wonderful ha happy birthday today even though i didn't get to spend much time with her because we lost electricity remember 6 a.m to 6 p.m today no electricity thank you botelek <laughs> so, but anyway i wanted to uh, thank all of you very much so uh tomorrow i don't know what's on the schedule for tomorrow mm, i know if you saw when i did the drone flyover uh nessa zen garden has uh, grass uh, impeding into all that rock I might deal with that a little bit and I also might go and go pick out some uh, plants for the area that a Ponciano back there is uh, filling in with soil I can actually plant some new plants inside there so we might go on a road trip tomorrow uh, so uh, what do you what do you think Marianne what do you think what do you think huh so anyway tomorrow is gonna be another day so if you enjoyed today's video please give us a thumbs up Please share, and if you have not subscribed, just click on that little My PR Dream Heart in the bottom right hand side of your screen. You'll be subscribed and you'll be notified the next time I upload a new video. So until that time, you have a wonderful and blessed day. But before we go on to whatever the next task is that we're going to do, which is probably lunch, because it's right at lunchtime right now. Let's see, what time is it? it no, it's not lunchtime.